All right, this week at Bungie, they are not telling us anything about season 17. Here's what you need to know. So they start off the TWAB by letting us know that they will not be letting us know anything about season 17 until Tuesday. It sounds like we won't actually be getting a trailer until Tuesday, like right before the event, and they're not even telling us which subclass is going to get the 3.0 treatment. We all know at this point that it's probably going to be solar, but they're not telling us anyway. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really mind this. I really liked in Season of Arrivals when they didn't tell us anything about the season until the day of. I thought that was really, really fun, but I understand that it kind of pisses some people off. So let me know, do you prefer them? waiting until the last day to tell us about the season or do you prefer them giving us a trailer and a name you know a week ahead of time as Bungie says, there will be a day when many of your questions will be answered, but today is not that day. Keep an eye out on Tuesday for anything and everything pertaining to Season 17. Now let's talk about Destiny events. Of course, Guardian Games is coming to a close, and it looks like Warlocks might actually be winning this one, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Warlocks have won any of the previous Guardian Games celebrations, so good on you guys. So here Bungie talks about how they've been wanting to kind of do an event makeover for a while, and when they say event makeover, they're talking about the Dawning, Festival of the Lost, Guardian Games, stuff like that. They want to make those events a bit more satisfying and interesting. They say that the effort began last year in Festival of the Lost, which featured new twists like the Monsters vs. Dinos community poll and Glint's ghost stories. While not every event will get a big update this year, we wanted to share a high-level look at our plans for the upcoming Solstice event, which begins on July 19th. So Solstice of Heroes is now just called Solstice, and as they mentioned, it will begin on July 19th, and here's kind of what's changing with it. It sounds like going forward, events will be themed around event cards and event challenges. We'll get into event cards in a minute, but the first main change coming to the Solstice of Heroes event is the grind for the armor. Now, in previous years, you have had to grind through multiple sets of armor and complete different challenges on that armor in order to get the final glowing, masterworked, legendary armor that you really, really want. Now you will only have to upgrade one set of Solstice armor throughout the event. While you can get multiple instances of a helmet, for example, upgrading armor will allow you to reroll its stats and the stat potential of the armor will be shared across these drops. Honestly, I think this is just a great change. Hopefully with these changes, it'll make the whole experience a bit more streamlined for people. Another new feature coming to Solstice is an activity in the European aerial zone called Bonfire Bash. If you don't know, the EAZ is a place that returns every year with the Solstice event. Guardians will be building and stoking what can only be described as a paracausal bond fire, which is giving me Dares of Eternity vibes, while the enemies of Summer Fun, including the Taken, Cabal, Hive, and Fallen, will be attempting to crash the party and extinguish the fires. We've made it easier to traverse the EAZ, adding floating islands and removing building barriers for maximum maneuverability. Clearly I wasn't the only one who thought that moving around the EAZ was just really, really difficult, so they're going to make it a bit easier this time around. Introducing the Event Card. With our Solstice event, we are introducing a new feature called the Event Card. In much the same way that seasonal challenges introduce an easy-to-understand and find list of goals you can complete in a season, the event card does the same for Destiny 2's annual events. When Solstice begins, players will gain access to this event card, which includes new points of interest to explore, including event challenges, event seals and titles, and unique event rewards. The event card is free for all players. It's essentially a one-stop shop for anything pertaining to the event. Event challenges. Like seasonal challenges, event challenges are objectives that players can complete to earn reward. Certain event challenges will award players with familiar items, such as event shaders, emblems, or other gear, and they'll also grant event tickets. We'll talk about event tickets in a second. In addition to this, every event will have its own title and seal. There will also be a new multi-event seal. In order to get this multi-event seal, you're going to have to participate in every annual event. So the earliest you'd be able to get it would be next year's Guardian games. These seals and titles can also be gilded, and the gilded effect will remain until the event begins again next year. You gain these seals and titles by progressing through the event card. Finishing every event challenge will automatically earn you seal progress and unlock the title for that seal. So it sounds like these titles are going to be pretty easy to get. If you're looking to get your first title, this might be the one to go for. Now there's also an upgraded event pass that you can purchase for a thousand silver. Think of it like the premium battle pass. Now this upgraded battle pass will give you bonus rewards that are typically only found in the Eververse store. Upon purchasing an upgraded event pass, you will get a handful of instant rewards. However, the rewards after that you will have to purchase with event tickets that you get for completing challenges. You don't have to buy event tickets, you get them just by playing through the event. So if you want to spend a thousand silver and get the premium version of an events given card, you can and you'll unlock some extra cosmetic rewards for it. Bungie says they expect the overall value of the premium event card to regularly exceed 3000 silver, so do with that information what you will. Here are some patch notes to go over, I won't go over all of them, but you can read them if you want. In Dares of Eternity, the strange coins you get from the final chest has been increased from 1 to 3. This does not affect the number of strange coins earned from lightning rounds. Of course, the hard cap for the season has been changed from 1560 to 1570. The powerful cap from 
from 1550 to 1560, the soft cap from 15 to 1510, and the power floor remains unchanged at 1350. Here's one that's going to make a lot of people happy. Vault space has been increased by 100. It was 500. It's now 600. Honestly, I'm not one that's running out of vault space, but I know a lot of people are, so it was good that Bungie was able to, as they say, pull some strings and get a little more space for our vaults. Increase scorn crossbow damage by 300%, ensuring players will always be one-shot by their attacks no matter their power level or how many damage resist modifiers they have equipped. Don't worry, that's a joke. The real patch note is that Scorn Sniper damage has been reduced to be brought in line with other combatant sniper weapons. The spread of the projectiles has also been increased to reduce instances of multiple projectiles hitting a single player. Alright, let's talk about the new dungeon that we're getting next week. So they go ahead and confirm that we are getting a new dungeon on Friday, May 27th at 10am Pacific Time. They don't tell us about the theme of the dungeon, but they do tell us that the normal difficulty power level is going to be 1550. Master difficulty will also be live day one as well, but we'll leave those entry requirements for you to see in the game next week. I find that really interesting interesting because I don't know if they've done this before, but I feel like why not tell us what the master requirements are? I doubt there's going to be anything crazy different about it, but it is interesting that they're choosing to withhold that information from us. Now they also give us a high level look at the rewards available from the dungeon, which include a new legendary armor set for each class, as well as artifice versions that can also be acquired via the master difficulty. We're going to be getting four new legendary weapons and two legendary reprised weapons, so I assume that means old Destiny 1 weapons brought back into Destiny 2, kind of like how Ayas Luna and Matador 64 can be acquired through the Grasp of Avarice. We're going to be getting a new exotic weapon and catalyst for that weapon. We will also be getting a new exotic accessory, so a ship or a sparrow, and two legendary emblems, I would assume one for beating it solo and one for beating it flawlessly. Honestly, this reward table looked really, really exciting to me. I wasn't expecting a whole lot more than just a legendary armor set from this dungeon, but it seems like Bungie is really doubling down on making dungeons true end game activities, which I'm all here for. This sounds amazing. They also mentioned that the digital deluxe edition of the Witch Queen will be going on sale for 25% off starting next Tuesday. So if you don't have it, now might be a good time to pick it up. So here's something interesting that I don't know if they've mentioned before, but if you just want the dungeons, that's totally fine. You can pick up both, so the Season 17 dungeon and the Season 19 dungeon, as part of the Witch Queen dungeon key in the Eververse store for 2,000 silver. So if you don't really want to purchase the Season Pass or the DLCs or whatever, if you just want the dungeons, you can buy them for essentially 20 bucks. Not sure if they mentioned that before, but figured I'd mention it here. All right, let's talk about Trials. If you know me, you know I love Trials, so this stuff got me really, really excited. We're going to be getting a new set of armor for Trials next season, and here is what that looks like. I honestly really like it. I think the Hunter is probably my favorite with the baboon-looking helmet. I thought it was super weird at first, but it's really growing on me. Not a huge fan of the Titan's armor. I think the chest and legs are really, really cool. The Mark helmet and arms are a bit weird, but I think the Warlock, of course, also looks pretty cool. Trials will be on hiatus through June 10th, but when it returns, we will be able to earn all of this new loot. The new loot also includes a new Trials of Osiris fusion rifle and a new Trials of Osiris themed sidearm. Of course, there will also be a new ghost and a new sparrow, which might I add, looks amazing. I like the feathery theme they have going on with this round of Trials gear. It looks really cool. Also, this weekend we will have freelance zone trials in the rotation as the last Trials weekend before season 17. So, if you're a solo player, good time to hop into Trials this weekend. Of course, as always, Bungie is going strong with the Bungie Foundation. I will leave a link in the description if you want to donate to this, but for anyone who donates $25 in a single donation, you will get this emblem, which which looks pretty dope. Here are some known issues. I find the second one pretty funny. The Renewal Grasp's damage buff may not function within a Duskfield Grenades area of effect. You love to see it. We have some movies of the week. Also, there were a couple of people in my Trials video commenting movie of the week, and I really appreciate it. I thought that was a nice gesture. There will be some downtime on Tuesday, running from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time before the new season starts. And that's your TWAB, your final TWAB before Season of Redacted ships. Now all that's left is a weekend of freelance zone capture trials and maybe a few triumphs standing between you and the Season of the Risen title. We'll see you again next Tuesday, patch notes and all. Cheers, DMG. So what'd you guys think? They didn't give us really any information on next season or the new subclass getting reworked. I was confident that this week's TWAB would be on Solar 3.0, but it wasn't. Honestly, like I said, I really don't mind though. I appreciate them keeping these things kind of close to the vest. And between a new dungeon, trials, and event changes, I think this was a pretty good one. Let me know what you think about this TWAB down below. I guess now all that's left to do is hold out until Tuesday when the new season drops. Really excited about it. Looking forward to whatever it is Bungie has to show us. Hope you found this interesting, entertaining, or informative. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.